Yes. So, look, I wanted to speak to the Finance and Public Administration Committee report into um, what effectively was the relocation right. of the Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Me Medicines Authority. And the report um, was very clear in what an uh, inappropriate thing for this government to be doing. There was so much in useful information that came through the reporting process. Firstly, of course, focusing on, on the whole relocation that was going ahead and that this is basically only occurring because of pork barrelling by the Deputy Prime Minister. What was documented in that report was, of course, that it's fundamental that there was a report done into the cost effectiveness of this relocation, finding that the relocation had a negative net present value and a cost benefit ratio below one. The report showed that the only way that this relocation of the APVMA was going to work was with a decentralised model that allowed people to work remotely, i.e. that so many of the regulatory scientists who are working for the APVMA are going to continue to work out of Canberra. So rather than having a situation where you have got a functioning authority operating here in Canberra, you are going to have an authority that's in Armadale and you're going to have the bulk of the regulatory scientists working from home in their offices that have got to be wired up with all of the, inter the, the um, internet facilities, all of the security to allow them to, to work from home so they can continue to be public servants working here in Canberra. We found that there were other, other things that were what, being woefully disregarded in this move. We found that the, the plans for training a whole new generation of regulatory scientists, which is what's needed, is woefully inadequate for dealing with the shortfall of expertise that's being experienced right now, let alone what is going to be experienced if the APVMA moved to Armadale. We've seen dramatic declines in the rate of completions of reviews of products, and we have still no idea how much this is hurting the agricultural industry. And we know, of course, that it is upending. Either we've got the people working here in having to work in substandard conditions where they're currently working for a, an authority that's um, working effectively together, or their lives need to be upended. And so the lives of hundreds of public servants here in Canberra will be upended for no purpose other than propping up an election commitment from the Deputy Prime Minister. Our report also showed the, uh, the deep problems that are behind the selection of Armadale for the site for the relocation. Of course, as we now know, Armadale is in the electorate of the Deputy Prime Minister and the, and the electorate of the man who was responsible for ordering this relocation. Think back to the last election when this was um, Barnaby, Barnaby Joyce's thought thought bubble. He was at a under a tonne of pressure in the last election. Oh, he had independent Tony Windsor threatening to take back his own seat. The Deputy Prime Minister needed to pull something out of the hat to try and convince his electorate that he was working hard for them. So this is the, this is the thought bubble. This is the rabbit that he pulled out of a hat, regardless of the fact that the cost-benefit analysis didn't make sense, regardless of the fact that the main people who work with the APVMA, their clients, they are not in rural Australia. They are here in Canberra. They are the other government departments and they are the pesticide, the pesticide companies. They are, they are not dealing with regional Australia. Moving, agencies being in regional um, centres make sense when their client base, when the people they relate to are also there. But in the case of the APVMA, that's not the case. And um, then we get to the fact that even if you're going to move to a regional area, how was it that Armadale was selected? When Minister Joyce asked the CEO of the APVMA whether she would prefer or whether she thought it would be appropriate to move to either Toowoomba or Armadale, she told him that Toowoomba would be preferable due to the proximity to the existing research in infrastructure. Yet Armadale was selected. And the commitment to Armadale was made in the thick of an election campaign, well before any cost-benefit analysis was done. It was the most atrocious way of making a really important government decision. And there are still so many questions, despite the questions that our committee asked, there are so, still so many questions remaining unanswered as to how and why Armadale was, 
was selected. And finally, the operations of our committee were being constantly derailed by certain senators who wanted to paint this committee as a witch hunt against decentralisation and against regional Australia. And this couldn't be further from the truth. We are not against the move of the APVMA to Armidale because we are against decentralisation. The Greens support decentralisation when it's done properly, which requires a proper assessment of the appropriateness for the relocation of each, in each institution and working on a proper local community-led holistic plan for the sustainable growth of our regional cities and towns. You don't do decentralisation just by picking up one entity and moving it at random because it happens to be a certain powerful politician's own electorate. The APVMA relocation is not a proper plan, but it's an election pork barrel that's going to hurt our farmers, hurt our national science capacity and hurt the integrity of our public service tradition. So that's why we agree with the majority report in recommending to revoke the public governance and performance and accountability order and to launch a proper inquiry into an evidence-based decentralisation policy. And we are also calling for the APVMA to remain in Canberra while there is still time. There, there is still time to pull back from the brink for the APVMA. There is still time to rescue the performance of the APVMA, to get it back working effectively, to be regaining staff, to be working on a proper plan for training regulatory sci scientists. And if you did that thorough analysis, it's very clear from the evidence presented to our committee that the recommendation would be that the APVMA is best suited here in Canberra. We want to see that undertaken and we want to see this broader inquiry into decentralisation. Regional Australia has got so much potential, but there are so many things that's holding it back. And it's not that the APVMA is, is in Canberra. The things that are holding regional Australia back are things like having adequate transport infrastructure, having adequate community services, having ad adequate um, broadband access. They are the sorts of things that we need to be addressing if we are going to do decentralisation properly in this country. That is the sort of sensible, evidence-based decision-making that people expect of governments, not a thought bubble, pork barrelling election commitment that is throwing up the, the, the way, the effectiveness of our science and putting a really valued institution really at risk. So I really do recommend this report to the Senate and think that everyone should have time to read it and realise just what's at stake and to realise that there is still the potential now to pull back from the brink and to keep the APVMA in Canberra. Thank you, Senator Ross. Are you seeking leave to continue your remarks? I am seeking leave to continue okay, my remarks. Okay, thank you for